In update 2.1, Gaijin added two new battlecruisers to War Thunder, HMS Invincible and SMS Von der Tan. These two were the first battlecruisers of Great Britain and Germany respectively, and as such, are natural to compare to each other. Of course, with any comparison, historic context is important, so let's get to it. HMS Invincible was laid down in 1906 and commissioned by 1909. It was the first battlecruiser ever constructed, with the design goal of hunting cruisers and avoiding battleships. It was present in the Battle of Jutland, where HMS Invincible's Q turret magazine was hit, causing it to detonate and sinking the ship. SMS Von der Tan was laid down in 1907 and commissioned by 1910. It was a direct response to Great Britain's Invincible class, which is something to keep in mind as the comparison goes on. SMS Von der Tan destroyed HMS Indefatigable at the Battle of Jutland, the lead ship of Britain's second class of battlecruisers. She survived World War I, being interned at Scapa Flow before being scuttled by the crew in 1919. For primary armament, both ships have eight main guns split into four turrets. 305mm 45 caliber cannons for Invincible, and 283mm 45 caliber cannons for Von Tatan. Both have the same gun dispersion, with Invincible having a fire rate of two shells per minute at max, while Von Tatan has a fire rate of three shells per minute at max. Invincible struggles to get all eight of its guns onto a single target, having to turn to very exact angles to do so. In real life, the wing turret's firing across the deck was prohibited, since the concussive force would damage the other turret. Von der Tan's turrets are much more spaced out, making it easier for all eight cannons to get onto a single target in a broadside. HMS Invincible can get 12 to 16 shells onto a target per minute, while Von der Tan can consistently get 24 shells onto a target per minute, which is a major advantage. I'll be doing the following calculations based on the 16 shells per minute figure for Invincible. Just keep in mind that this isn't a constant. Invincible's shells are distinctly stronger than that of Von der Tan, helping to close the damage output gap. The high explosive shells of HMS Invincible have about three times as much filler as the shells of Von der Tan, leading to it having about twice the HE output per minute. However, Von der Tan's shells have a base fuse, which makes them slightly better than the numbers may suggest. The AP shells have roughly similar penetration, but Invincibles have about 40% more filler, overall giving Von der Tan a slight advantage in armor-piercing damage output. The faster fire rate of Von der Tan makes it much easier to hit ammo racks overall, making it better at hitting the vital internals of large ships. Invincible has an SAP shell, while Von der Tan doesn't. This gives it a large advantage against cruisers and some battle cruisers, but it can't penetrate Von der Tan's main armor belt outside of point blank, giving it no advantage in a 1v1. Overall, I'd give Von der Tan the advantage in primary firepower. The faster fire rate closes the per shell damage gap, and both have very powerful shells regardless, with Von der Tan being better against armored targets. For secondaries, HMS Invincible has 12 102mm cannons, a 76mm cannon, and a 3-pounder Hotchkiss gun. Von der Tan has 10 150mm cannons, 16 88mm cannons, and two 7.92mm machine guns. Both secondary loadouts are pretty weak, though Von der Tan's is overall much stronger than Invincible's. More barrels, larger guns, and some machine guns while Invincible has none. Both provide an effective weapon to take out destroyers and patrol boats, though against cruisers, only Von der Tan's secondaries have enough penetration to consistently deal damage. Neither secondaries are effective against dreadnoughts, and both struggle to hit aircraft, though Von der Tan is slightly better in that respect due to its machine guns. For torpedoes, Invincibles are marginally stronger, while Von der Tan has many more of them. However, neither is particularly effective, so it's not worth going into much depth on them. In survivability, Von der Tan is easily the winner. It has more belt coverage and thicker armor, more crew, better turret and barbette armor, and more coverage from its turtleback scheme and coal bunkers. There's simply no contest between them, with Von der Tan being far more survivable than Invincible by a long shot. Last for the stats of the vehicles comes their mobility. HMS Invincible has a top speed of 49 km per hour, while Von der Tan has a top speed of 51 km per hour. Neither of them is particularly good. They're faster than Dreadnoughts, but slower than the World War II cruisers that they face. Von der Tan has a slight advantage here, though not by much. In a 1v1 situation, Von der Tan easily has the advantage over Invincible, and will win in most cases. This naturally makes sense, considering Von der Tan was designed to directly counter the Invincible class. But how do Von der Tan and Invincible do against other ship classes? 
HMS Invincible's armor is weak enough for it to be penetrated by many cruisers, while Von Der Tan can generally resist just about any light and most heavy cruiser ammunition. The faster fire rate of Von Der Tan makes it very powerful against cruisers, as the difference in per shell damage between Invincible and Von Der Tan doesn't matter as much against the already vulnerable cruisers. Saturating the hull with repeated shells is much better than single strong shots. HMS Invincible's SAP can thoroughly thrash their internals and ammo racks though, as no cruiser has the armor to consistently stop it. Both of them do quite well in destroying cruisers, but Von Der Tan has the advantage in general. Against Dreadnoughts, neither ship is particularly powerful. However, Von Der Tan can provide more protection against their shells while also delivering more AP shells per minute with similar penetration to Invincibles, making it easier to snipe ammo racks and destroy compartments within a ship's armor. Against aircraft, Von Der Tan is also better due to its high number of secondaries, faster secondary fire rate, and having machine guns to provide constant pressure. Its better turtleback armor also provides it more protection to aerial bombs, as well as the thicker belt helping with airdropped torpedoes. Invincible does have a 76mm cannon with a timed fuse shell, however it is overall much more vulnerable to air attacks. Ease of research and tree placement are also considerations. HMS Invincible is in Tier 5, coming after HMS London and costing 270,000 RP. Von Der Tan is also in Tier 5, coming after the Admiral Graf Spee and costing 270,000 RP. HMS Invincible leads the way to researching HMS Colossus, while Von Der Tan is currently the last ship at its line, leading to a dead end. However, in the future Von Der Tan is likely to have Moltke, Seidlitz, and Der Flinger placed after it, so it may provide a better ship line to research. Overall, Von Der Tan is the winner in most if not all of the categories. This is to be expected. Von Der Tan is a later design and directly designed to counter HMS Invincible. German battlecruiser design was also different from that of the British, which plays a major role in this comparison. While Admiral Tirpitz was against using battlecruisers in the main battle line, Kaiser Wilhelm II and much of the Reichsmarine opt was in favor of it, resulting in the German battlecruisers being given much thicker armor than their British counterparts. Since War Thunder spawns everyone in range of each other, a ship's effectiveness in the battle line is its most important quality. Due to this, Von Der Tan easily and consistently comes out ahead of HMS Invincible. Even in large EC maps, Von Der Tan has a slight mobility advantage, meaning it still wins in hunting down and destroying HMS Invincible, along with enemy cruisers. So I know it's been a while since I made one of these comparison videos. Vehicle comparisons are kind of few and far between, since it's a little strange. It effectively replaces a floor view for two vehicles, and generally two ships need to be close enough to compare, while being different enough to not just be identical. However, I do plan to do more soon, rather than another accidental half-year wait. So, stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching.